Great Books of the Western World, Wikipedia Audio Great Books of the Western World is a series of books originally published in the United States in 1952, by Encyclopædia Britannica, Inc., to present the great books in a 54-volume set. The original editors had three criteria for including a book in the series, the book must be relevant to contemporary matters, and not only important in its historical context, it must be rewarding to reread, and it must be a part of the great conversation about the great ideas, relevant to at least 25 of the 102 great ideas identified by the editors. The books were not chosen on the basis of ethnic and cultural inclusiveness, historical influence, or the editor's agreement with the views expressed by the authors. Initial sales were poor, so the sales strategy switched to a door-to-door -door operation which was much more successful. History A second edition was published in 1990 in 60 volumes. Some translations were updated, some works were removed, and there were significant additions from the 20th century. The project for the great books of the Western world began at the University of Chicago, where the president, Robert Hutchins, collaborated with Mortimer Adler to develop a course generally aimed at business people for the purpose of filling the gaps in their liberal education to render the reader as an intellectually rounded man or woman familiar with the great books of the Western canon, and knowledgeable of the great ideas developed in the course of three millennia. An original student of the project was William Benton who proposed selecting the greatest books of the Western canon, and that Hutchins and Adler produce unabridged editions for publication, by Encyclopedia Britannica. Yet. Hutchins was wary of such a business endeavor, fearing that the books would be sold as a product, thereby devaluing them as cultural artifacts, nevertheless, he agreed to the business deal, and was paid $60,000 for the project. After deciding what subjects and authors to include, and how to present the materials, the project was begun, with a budget of $2 million. On April 15, 1952, the great books of the Western world were presented at a publication party in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, in New York City. In his speech, Hutchins said, This is more than a set of books, and more than a liberal education. Great books of the Western world is an act of piety. Here are the sources of our being. Here is our heritage. This is the West. This is its meaning for mankind. The first two sets of books were given to Elizabeth II, Queen of the United Kingdom, and to Harry S. Truman, the incumbent U.S. President. The initial sales of the book sets were poor, with only 1,863 sets sold in 1952 and less than one-tenth of that number of book sets were sold in 1953. A financial debacle loomed until Encyclopædia Britannica altered the sales strategy, and sold the book set through experienced door-to-door -door encyclopedia salesmen, as Hutchins had feared, but, through that method, 50,000 sets were sold in 1961. In 1963, the editors published Gateway to the Great Books, a ten-volume set of readings meant to introduce the authors and the subjects of the great books. Each year, from 1961 to 1998, the editors published The Great Ideas Today, an annual updating about the applicability of the great books to contemporary life. The Internet and the e-book reader have made available some of the great books of the Western world in an online format. Originally published in 54 volumes, 
The Great Books of the Western World covers categories including fiction, history, poetry, natural science, mathematics, philosophy, drama, politics, religion, economics, and ethics. Hutchins wrote the first volume, titled The Great Conversation, as an introduction and discourse on liberal education. Adler sponsored the next two volumes, The Great Ideas, a Sintapikan, as a way of emphasizing the unity of the set and, by extension, of Western thought in general. A team of indexers spent months compiling references to such topics as man's freedom in relation to the will of God and the denial of void or vacuum in favor of a plenum. They grouped the topics into 102 chapters, for which Adler wrote 102 introductions. Four colors identify each volume by subject area imaginative literature, mathematics, and the natural sciences, history and social science, and philosophy, and theology. The volumes contain the following works. The second edition of Great Books of the Western World, 1990, saw an increase from 54 to 60 volumes, with updated translations. The six new volumes concerned the 20th century, an era of which the first edition's sole representative was Freud. Some of the other volumes were rearranged, with even more pre-20th century material added but with four texts deleted, Apollonius on Conic Sections, Lawrence Sternes Tristram Shandy, Henry Fielding's Tom Jones, and Joseph Fourier's Analytical Theory of Heat. Adler later expressed regret about dropping on conic sections and Tom Jones. Adler also voiced disagreement with the addition of Voltaire's Candide, and said that the Sintapican should have included references to the Koran. He addressed criticisms that the set was too heavily Western European and did not adequately represent women and minority authors. The added pre-20th century texts appear in these volumes. The contents of the six volumes of added 20th century material. The choice of authors has come under attack, with some dismissing the project as a celebration of dead European males, ignoring contributions of women and non-European authors. The criticism swelled in tandem with the feminist and civil rights movements. Similarly, in his Europe, A History, Norman Davies criticizes the compilation for overrepresenting selected parts of the Western world, especially Britain and the US, while ignoring the other, particularly Central and Eastern Europe. According to his calculation, in 151 authors included in both editions, there are 49 English or American authors. 27 Frenchmen, 20 Germans, 15 Ancient Greeks, 9 Ancient Romans, 4 Russians, 4 Scandinavians, 3 Spaniards, 3 Italians, 3 Irishmen, 3 Scots, and 3 Eastern Europeans. Prejudices and preferences, he concludes, are self-evident. Volumes in response, such criticisms have been derided as ad hominem and biased in themselves. The counter-argument maintains that such criticisms discount the importance of books solely because of generic, imprecise, and possibly irrelevant characteristics of the book's authors, rather than because of the content of the books themselves. Others thought that while the selected authors were worthy, too much emphasis was placed on the complete works of a single author rather than a wider selection of authors and representative works. The second edition of the set already contained 130 authors and 517 individual works. The editors point out that the guides to additional reading for each topic in the Sintapican refer the interested reader to many more authors. 
the scientific and mathematical selections came under criticism for being incomprehensible to the average reader, especially with the absence of any sort of critical apparatus. The second edition did drop two scientific works, by Apollonius and Fourier, in part because of their perceived difficulty for the average reader. Nevertheless, the editors steadfastly maintain that average readers are capable of understanding far more than the critics deem possible. Robert Hutchins stated this view in the introduction to the first edition. Since the great majority of the works were still in print, one critic noted that the company could have saved $2 million and simply written a list. Encyclopedia Britannica's aggressive promotion produced solid sales. Dense formatting also did not help readability. The second edition selected translations that were generally considered an improvement, though the cramped typography remained. Through reading plans and the Sintapican, the editors have attempted to guide readers through the set. The editors responded that the set contains wide-ranging debates representing many viewpoints on significant issues, not a monolithic school of thought. Mortimer Adler argued in the introduction to the second edition. Volume 1 Volume 2 Volume 3 Volume 4 Volume 5 Volume 6 Volume 7 Volume 8 Volume 9 Volume 10 Volume 11 Volume 12 Volume 13 Volume 14 Volume 15 Volume 16 Volume 17 Volume 18 Volume 19 Volume 20 Volume 21 Volume 22 Volume 23 Volume 24 Volume 25 Volume 26 Volume 27 Volume 28 Volume 29 Volume 30 Volume 31 Volume 32 Volume 33 Volume 34 Volume 35 Volume 36 Volume 37 Volume 38 Volume 39 Volume 40 Volume 41 Volume 42 Volume 43 Volume 44 Volume 45 Volume 46 Volume 47 Volume 48 Volume 49 Volume 50 Volume 51 Volume 52 Volume 53 Volume 54 Second Edition Volume 22 Volume 23 2 Volume 31 2 Volume 34 2 Volume 43 2 Volume 44 2 Volume 45 2 Volume 46 2 Volume 47 2 Volume 48 2 Volume 52 2 Volume 55 Volume 56 Volume 57 Volume 58 Volume 59 Volume 60 
Criticisms and Responses Authors Works Difficulty Rationale Response to Criticisms <laughs>